data structure in java part 2 continuing from what we did just now in the previous video now till now we saw whatever we store in computer goes and gets stored in its memory and a memory is nothing but a sequence of internal hexadecimal values internal hexadecimal values mark some numbers those numbers tell the capacity of the computer memory computer memory if you remember has got two type one is primary and the other is secondary when a process is going on whatever gets stored gets stored in the primary memory now when we write a program in the program the variables that are used those variables need to be saved can you guess those program time variables are stored in primary memory or secondary memory well make a guess i'll tell the answer the answer is primary memory because once the program is shut down and when it is switched on if you uh, run the program and want to see where is this variable getting stored in the computer's memory this time you will find every time the execution is done the internal storage gets changed but there is another aspect when it comes to secondary memory so this is a coming up matter for now we'll look at what is memory allocation why is it needed which keyword is used for memory allocation? How to do memory allocation for primitives and non-primitives in Java? Therefore, we come to what is a primitive and what is a non-primitive? Well, by now, you might have heard about primitives which are byte, short, int, long, float, double, char, boolean. And you might have heard about non-primitives which are arrays and objects. What are primitives? They are those variables data type that is already known by the compiler. And what are non-primitives? They are those what the compiler does not know how much space to book for it. So, if I say... Uh, when you run a program and you want to store something which has got a fixed size, then you can choose a primitive or a bunch of primitives that will say that, okay, okay, fine, fine. If you want to store a very big number, choose data type long. If you want to choose something which is a very small number, choose data type short. If you want to store something which will store a character, store a uh, keyboard character, you can store in char. So these are predictable ones already known to the compiler. So the compiler doesn't have to do anything to... Uh, reserve and calculate how much space has to be kept aside but when it comes to non-primitives then like in case of arrays where the size of the array can change from one case to the other that means you may store uh, seven numbers you may store 25 numbers you may store maybe 100 or you may even change the value of the require as per the requirement when the program is in execution that means you input a variable and using that variable you can allocate the number of cells that you will keep for this array same is with objects when its object is even wider that you may need uh, multiple data with multiple size you can even have uh, in an object that means when you're preparing an object and defining the class then you can even keep an array inside the object which can have a varying size so this all brings us to the size requirement and that size requirement is handled when memory allocation is done okay the program when is getting compiled the compiler which is a master program will decide how much space to allocate for this and the keyword that is used for memory allocation is new the keyword that is used for memory allocation the key which keyword is used keyword 
new is used in a program. So this is coming up in the next video. Okay.